Hey crypto peeps, hope you're doing well. And um, Bitcoin is currently trading at, let me see here, around about $29,000 and change. So it's dropped a little bit, but still holding in there pretty well. So let's get to the weekly news, shall we? Okay, so my first piece of news here is on Cheddar News, and it's all about PayPal. I got some video news about this as well. Uh, big moves in PayPal over the last 24 hours. So PayPal launches a digital stablecoin. It's called PayPal USD, and there's a video about it there. I won't play that. Have a look at that on your own. Um, but also there's another piece of news here on Coindesk. Uh, PayPal's regulated stablecoin is a watershed moment in the crypto space, says its partner Paxos. Of course it would, but it is an ultra-ship movement, I think. It's going to be very interesting to see how this develops. So it's going to be called PYUSD, uh, and it's going to be the first regulated stablecoin from a global payments company. Its customer assets are also protected against bankruptcy. The dominant uh, players in stablecoins, cryptocurrencies designed to mimic US dollars, don't appear to be flustered by the fintech giant PayPal launching its own PYUSD token but it's a watershed moment in terms of bringing regulation to the space, according to Paxos, PayPal's partner on the project. The vast majority of stablecoins in circulation are either USDT created in the early days of crypto by a firm called Tether, or Circle, a US-based company with the issuer of the USDC stablecoin in cooperation with Coinbase. There's a glaring difference between PYUSD and its other rivals, however, says Walter Hessart, head of strategy at Paxos. He goes on to say here, the difference is significant because we have a prudential regulator. And he said this in an interview of Coindesk, in our case, you have a regulator overseeing every activity involved in the issuance, including the reserve management, and it means no matter where you are in the world, Anybody who has this token is protected by oversight and the rules that are set for us in New York. In terms of those rules, a big one is the removal of bankruptcy risk. Customers' assets are protected, including if pack software go bankrupt, a situation we now see with a bunch of companies in crypto. And there's a lot more details on it there. As with all the news bites, I'm just reading little snippets, news bites of information here, all the real details down below. So please check out the links and do your research fully. Very interesting moves there from PayPal. It's going to be interesting to see how that develops over the next coming weeks and months. Moving on to my next piece of news here on a website called Tom's Hardware. Uh, this is an interesting one. We did this in crypto viewing a few weeks back. We didn't really like the coin very much in our review. So please check that out on our main website especially the members. Uh, Worldcoin was the coin in question, and the headlines have been out about this the last week. Worldcoin attracts 2 million users as hundreds line up to stare at the orb. What's this all about? Well, hundreds of people around the world are lining up around orbs to get their irises scanned for Worldcoin, and this is Sam Altman's World Identity Project. But when a proof of personhood can also net you a $50 return, and promise you anonymized world identity ID, there may be reasons to accept. But moving on anyway, hundreds of people uh, the, over the world are lining up to get their irises scanned by looking into a seamlessly bottomless steel orb. Most are hoping to collect 25 units or around about $50 worth of world coin, the divisive cryptocurrency that's the brainchild of Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI and ChatGPT. But while it's free money, even if it's digital, is always an enticing prospect, questions surrounding the technology have given detractors more than ample reason to urge caution. It's not every day you have to give up your biometric data to enter the party. There's more details on that one if that one interests you. As I said, we looked at it in CryptoView and we didn't like where that was going, but you know you may have a different opinion. Do your research, check it out, see what you think. The next piece of paper-based news I have here for you is on Bitcoinists and crypto law requiring IDs for $10,000 purchases will go into effect in five months. The countdown has begun for a significant shift in the world of cryptocurrencies as a new US law gears up to reshape the landscape. Set to be enacted on January 1st, 2024, this regulation mandates American businesses to collect personal information from individuals conducting digital asset transactions over $10,000. Now, while this is held as a step towards transparency and taxation, 
This law has ignited fierce debates, legal battles, and concerns surrounding the potential infringement of individual financial privacy. The IRS, or Internal Revenue Service, now mandates that American businesses must file Form 8300 and report crypto payments of over $10,000. And while seen as a move towards transparency, it sparked legal battles about financial privacy. Yeah, I don't know where, what I think about this one. Um, I don't like the governments anywhere in the world knowing what we're doing with our finances. Um, I think it's a very rocky road. So we'll see where that one goes. Um, goes on to say here a little bit more information. With a mission to defend the rights of digital asset enthusiasts, Coin Center rebuked the provision of the bipartisan infrastructure bills of 2021, and they classed them as counterproductive and unconstitutional towards cryptocurrency trades and transactions. So there's lots of debate on that, and there's lots in that article there, so give that a look. Let us know what you think about this. It's a big move. Um, it's going to mean a lot of paperwork for a lot of people as well. Um, and I don't, like the, uh, I don't like the government's knowing what you're doing with your money. It's your money. You should be able to keep it to yourself. The last piece of paper-based news I have here, uh, this and this has been emerging over the last 24 to 48 hours, are rumours or FUD. We don't know where it is right now, but you know we'll see where it goes. Uh, Tron's Justin Sun denies the Hubei exchange is insolvent after arrests spark a $64 million in outflows. Justin Sun, who is the founder of the Tron Network and a global advisor on the Hubei cryptocurrency exchange, said people should ignore the fear, uncertainty and doubt, or FUD, surrounding the exchange after reports of arrest of senior executives by Chinese government authorities. And this sparked a 60 million outflow from the exchange in two days. He says, ignore the third, keep building. Uh, crypto markets began to react after Chinese crypto reporter Colin Wu posted a series of tweets early on August 5th, claiming that Chinese police have detained and investigated many senior executives of the offshore crypto exchange. Recently, a large number of senior executives uh, of Offshore exchanges such as CTO and the CHO have been attained, detained and investigated by the Chinese police for allegedly providing fund payment and settlement services for gambling websites. About two hours later, local Chinese media outlet Tech Hub corroborated Wu's post tweeting that at least three Hubei executives have been arrested and that some of the exchange employees were sent an urgent notification advising them to depart China as quickly as possible. Following the reports, Hubei saw outflows toting the $64 million over the weekend, and it's still continuing now. So if you have money on that exchange, or if you use that exchange, keep a very close eye on it, and you may even want to think about moving your money somewhere a little bit safer. So that's the paper-based news, and as I say, every week there's fantastic uh, video resources out there. So we're gonna look at some video resources now. The first one's Coin Bureau. Uh, and this is what's going on in crypto. It's a general overview. It's around about 23 minutes. Have a look at that one. That's very good. The next one we have here is Altcoin Daily. Goes on for around right 10 minutes. And it's the great Binance Coinbase Black Box Tether Conspiracy. Lots of information on that one. Uh, favorite of mine to have a look at that. The third video I have here, this will be very information for you just in case. So bookmark this because you never know what might happen. But it's what happened if I've been hacked. So it's called I've been hacked, now what? And it's a step-by-step -step guide to get you out of that situation. It goes on for 12 minutes. So that could be very useful out there. So keep an eye on that one. And my final piece of video here today is CNBC Television. And it's CNBC World. And they're talking about the PayPal, uh, the PayPal launch of its new stable coin. And that goes on for around about 10 minutes. So that's very informative as well. So that's it for the news for this week. I hope you enjoy that. Lots of information out there, lots of big things happening, even though Bitcoin's dropped a little bit. You know, it's almost in like a holding pattern to do well very soon. It looks like all the indicators are in that it's going to do so. Have a great week out there. Be safe. Look at what you're doing. Do your research. And, you know, answer our questions here. You know, give us, give us some questions and comments down below. Hit that like button and subscribe. And then go to our main website because we have huge amounts of information on there. As I said, we did WorldCoin not long ago. And we all have very dodgy feelings about where that was going in the future. Um, so have a look at what we've produced on that and the many other projects that we're putting out for our paying for subscribers. Have a great week ahead. Take care out there. Namaste. See you soon.